Hello creatures, my name's Chloe. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which I'm filming this video today. I would also like to acknowledge elders both past and present. So I'm bringing you my July wrap up. This one is a little bit more on time than all my other wrap ups pretty much this year. I think five of the six so far have been late and three of them went up last week. So I'm trying to maintain a little bit more consistency in when these are going up. So the first book I read in July was Black Panther Volume 1, A Nation Under Our Feet by Ta-Nehisi Coates. I didn't end up giving it a rating. I did really enjoy it, but I have not actually seen the Black Panther film or read any Black Panther before. So I really, really enjoyed it. But after I finished it, I went and read some reviews and realised you get a lot more out of this particular edition of Black Panther by knowing more about the character's history, which is something I intend to look into eventually fan of comic books. I just don't give them as much time in my reading as I should. So I'm planning on digging more into old Black Panther comic books and watching the film and then rereading this to see if my opinion of it changes. I thought the art style was beautiful and the writing was stunning but this read to me like something that you need context to understand it, in my opinion. But I did really enjoy it, even though I didn't give it a rating. The next book I read was How to Catch a Mermaid by Adam Wallace. This is a children's picture book that I read on Libby. It popped up when I was browsing their fantasy section and I didn't actually realise it was a picture book when I clicked into it, but it was super cute. It's very, very short. There's only a handful of words on each page, but really beautiful colours, nice style. Again, I chose not to give it a rating because it is so short and it is a picture book, but I did read it this month. The next one is Hot Sex, How to Do It by Tracy Cox. This is a relationships guide from the 90s. It was interesting. There were some gender stereotypes in there that I found a bit questionable to say the least, but it was really, really interesting. It got a lot into relationship dynamics and how to make sure you and your partner are communicating effectively. This is part of another video that I have planned, but I don't know how long off that's going to be because I've got to read a lot more books before I'm able to actually make it. I didn't give it a rating because it's a self-help book. Sometimes I rate them, sometimes I don't. This one I chose not to rate because A, it's practically historical, it's over 20 years old, it's not as accurate as it could be, and this one I feel is really take the bits you need, discard the rest, which is what other self-help books are obviously as well, but some go into different spaces, kind of, if that makes sense. So after that I read I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This is the one woman search for the Golden State State Killer. Very, very famous book that is widely believed to have led to the arrest of the Golden State Killer, but there was no new evidence pre presented in the book. It was more that it contributed to to the awareness around the killer, which is the official statement from the police, whereas the people who knew Michelle believe that she uncovered genuine new evidence and unearthed new leads in the book. I don't know what's true, this is just what was in it. I really enjoyed this. I watch a lot of crime shows, I watch a lot of crime documentaries with my mother. This is one of the first true crime books I have actually read, and I really enjoyed it because Michelle really approached the subject matter with a great deal of grace and poise. She humanised the victims and didn't just turn them into numbers. She didn't list off every victim. She focused in on certain cases where she would outline more of the circumstances rather than give short summaries of every single assault or murder, etc. I'm not going to say too much about it because it is about a serial killer. It, it's dark content, which I know a lot of people can find very confronting. Personally, I'm very afraid of serial killers. It's it's a thing. I always have been. So for me, reading about them is kind of, I don't know, a defense mechanism, kind of. I feel like if I can learn more about them, then it will make me feel safer. Whether or not it actually works is up for debate, but that's that's part of why I read this. I really, really loved this. I thought it was beautifully written, very well researched, and interesting. Plus, Considering that the author actually died before she could complete it, I felt her friends and family did an excellent job of completing her work to the best of their ability from her notes. I did end up rating this 4 out of 5 stars. The Fifth Gender by Gail Carragher. This is part of her Tinkered Stars universe that at the moment only consists of this book and another novella. I really, really liked this. It's a murder mystery on a space station. I really enjoyed it. It was more about 
the gender and sex differences in the main character's species as opposed to his love interest who is a human. Our main character Triss lives on this space station and he is part of the Galloway race which has five genders. I'm not going to go too much into how that works because that is the core of the book. It's almost a study in interspecies relationships in a socially complex galaxy which I really loved. It was really really interesting, very well written I felt and everything in it was explained very very clearly even though you are bombarded with a lot of new information it's not overwhelming. I really enjoyed it. So the romance is between Triss and Dre. Dre is a is a detective on the space station. Triss works as a cultural attaché. When a ship from Gal which is Triss Doll's homeland docks at the space station requesting aid in investigating a murder. He and Dre are thrown together to do so because in Triss's society murder, assaults, crime isn't really a thing with how they've developed as a species. I can't explain it too much because it's so short but yeah it's really really good. I very much enjoyed it. I did feel it could have been longer and the main relationship is a tad insta-lovey. Just a little bit. So I would recommend being aware of that before you go into it but I did really enjoy it. That was four out of five stars. No Matter the Wreckage by Sarah Kay. This is a poetry book. I liked it. I didn't find it that emotionally resonating. The poem were beautiful, the writing style was beautiful, but it just didn't click there for me, so this was only 3 out of 5. Wasted Words by Stacey Hart. This is the first book in her Austin retelling series, so this retells Emma, but it's in the context of a bar called Wasted Words, which is part bookshop, part bar. Our main character works there and she really enjoys setting people up, but sometimes she missteps, especially when it seems she's developing feelings for one of her close friends. This was really fun. However, I read this because I've read other Stacey Hart books, but I don't actually like the book Emma. I find it incredibly irritating and have done for a long time. I do plan on rereading it because I have friends who like it, so I'm going to give it another try for them, but it, it's not my thing. I find Emma very, very meddlesome, and that sort of happened with this character as well. But once we move past her matchmaking and being very, very rude to a couple of people, in the book. It got really good. It was really cute. I enjoyed how the characters developed. It was just, even the matchmaking itself doesn't bother me. It's the fact she was so rude to a guy who showed interest in the girl she was trying to set up with somebody. She was really rude. It just makes me uncomfortable. I get terrible secondhand awkwardness. If you don't mind that, you will probably be fine reading this book. For me, that was just a little bit irritating. Nevertheless, it did get four out of five stars. I am continuing with Stacey Hart's work because I did talk a little bit about this in my most recent reading vlog. I've read these in the wrong order. So I started with a series that comes after the Austens, which is the Bennett Brothers. So that's gender swapped Bennett's from Pride and Prejudice. This comes before that as the start of the Austen series and then the Pride and Prejudice retelling is coming out later in the year and that's nearly finished. But before that there's the Bad Habits series which sets up the Austen universe, sort of. You can read them all separately but I should have read that first. So I've gone back to that now. It's it's a lot. I am reading the uh, the first book in the Habits series at the moment actually. But it was very good 4 out of 5 stars and I will let you know how the rest of the series goes. Veins of Gold by Charlie and Holmberg. This is a story of a girl living in Gold Rush era in America. Her father sets out to join the Gold Rush leaving her and her two siblings absolutely destitute. He promises he will send money back but he hasn't yet and they don't have very much money so this is sort of the story of Gentry, the main character trying to find a way to survive in a very very harsh environment without the protection of her father and along the way she meets a magical young man named Wynne who sort of educates her about the effect the gold rush is having on the land and the magic in the land and how it is responding. This is a very quiet little story. It probably didn't make much sense how I just explained it to be honest but I've, I've also said this before. This reads like the side story in a big epic fantasy. It's, it's a small story but a very very lovely one. I got very invested in Gentry. It, it was really good. I gave it four out of five. I did feel the magic could have been a bit more developed and I would have enjoyed it if it was longer but I was still really happy. The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is the second book in her Women Are Some Kind of Magic Poetry series. I really loved the first one. I loved the second one just as much. I love poetry and I love feminist poetry. I think that's the big thing that's connecting with me. I connected with all these poems. It was fantastic. Five out of five also. Hi guys it's editing me here. I forgot to talk about a book. So Rolling in the Deep by 
by Myra Grant, also known as Shauna McGuire, is a novella that goes with Into the Drowning Deep, which I read earlier this year. Rolling in the Deep tells the story of the Atagatis, which is a ship that is hired by the Imagine Entertainment Company. They make mockumentaries, basically, so they go looking for aliens, fairies, zombies, that sort of thing. This time they are looking for mermaids. They go out into some of the deepest waters known to man over the Mariana Trench and bad things start happening because they may have actually stumbled across mermaids. This was very very short because it is a novella. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was just as good as Into the Drowning Deep but obviously being so much shorter that did make it a little bit different but I did thoroughly enjoy it. I rated it 5 out of 5 stars because for the space it had, it did a brilliant job at setting up this world and I kind of wish I'd read this one before I read Into the Drowning Deep. It would have probably built up the suspense a little bit more for me, but it was still very good. And the last book I read in July was Bowie's Books, The Hundred Literary Heroes Who Changed His Life by John O'Connell. This collects a list that David Bowie made before he died of a hundred books that he found deeply important, profound. John O'Connell has gone through and analysed each one, connected it to Bowie's work and giving you a book recommendation and a music recommendation for when you're reading it. I really enjoyed it but didn't give it a rating because it's sort of a list with a little bit of literary analysis. It didn't really seem like it would work with a rating system kind of. So those are all the books I read in the month of July. I know that I didn't write a lot of books this month but I, I sort of couldn't so that was interesting. I am hoping to read more again next month. I have hit 150 books on my Goodreads reading challenge this year which is technically 153 because I did read The Modern Fairy Tales Collection by Holly Black this year but I read that as one book rather than individual books so I'm technically a little bit ahead which means I'm halfway through but I need to read a bit more if I'm going to catch up. So that is it from me. I hope you enjoyed this wrap up. All my social media links are down in the description box below. My Goodreads is there if you want to see what I'm reading as I'm reading it and occasionally get some written reviews. I am trying to get better at those. And my Instagram is also there if you want to actually see my book collection aside from what I put up on here. Subscribe if you want to, like it if you did, and I will see you soon in my next video.